All right, on today's episode of Python Poppy, we're back inside our Tensor Flow course, and we're still doing our ResNet model module. Let's have a look at what we went over today. Yesterday, I told you that we did have to find some bugs and work them out and make sure our code was running. So we did successfully get everything worked out, and our code is running successfully. So let me get in. Uh, well, first, let me show you what we ran yesterday, so I can uh, pick that up. We ran our ResNet, so you can see we got the ResNet 34, ResNet 34, and we got the ResNet 34 TF.0s. One, two, fifty-six, two, fifty-six, three. 256, 256, 3, and our summary. So that's going to be this here. You can see everything ran successfully. And how do we know that this is the right one? You can see here we have our residual blocks that all that all ran. And then also we have some new parameters. So we have a total number of uh, 21,311,747 total parameters. Trainable is going to be 21,294,000. 723 and non trainable is going to be 17,024. Now, I would show you the uh, original summaries that we had, but I don't know. Like I said, we're not able to pick up the entire code like we used to, so I can't show the original uh, summaries that we had from the prior pieces of code, like the pieces of code way up here where we ran summaries on this information. But yeah, everything is running successfully, so everything is up to par, and we were able to move on and start taking notes again. So the next thing that we were going to do, we were going to go over the, the checkpoint callbacks. So we did take notes for that, and we did do the process of that. I didn't run it yet, but we just uh, took the notes and everything. So this should return our model summary and show us the details of our model so far. With that being done, we are going to move on to the training. This time around, we will include some checkpoints. We will ensure that as we train, we save our best model weights. Now, this is how we will implement our model training with the checkpoints. You can see we have our checkpoint callback equals model checkpoint. These are all parameters. We have weights. This is spelled wrong. This might might have been an issue. I'm glad I caught it down. So we have our weights. Then we have our monitor equals validation accuracy. Our robust equals one. And then we have our save vest only equals true. Now we started with our checkpoint callback. And if we need a reminder, we can check back to our previous modules for more details on the checkpoint callback. So we're not going to go over it in detail here. We're just going to go over the process of implementing it and how we move forward. So we have our callback, which will permit us total weights for our best performing weights. We also have a monitor that will monitor the validation accuracy. Before we move forward, we will go back to the defined call, which had the training parameters. And this is located in our custom cov 2 d class. We also have a batch normalization. It should be noted that with this batch normalization layer, we have to specify whether we are in training mode or in inference mode or testing mode. The reason why we are doing this is because the parameters of the batch norm layer will react differently or behave differently in these two different modes. This means that during the training, true means this layer will normalize the inputs with the mean and variance with the current batch of inputs. False means we're in inference mode and the layer will normalize the input using the mean and inference or the mean and variance of his moving statistics learned during training. So this means that if we have a layer that we'll call a layer, for example, so we have the parameter earlier, and during the training, our layer updates these parameters. But then during inference, we do not want to update these parameters as they were learned during training. So we have to set the training to false when we are not training the model or if we are evaluating the model or testing the model. What that simply means is that we'll have to add training to our x equals self dot batch norm, C line 348. And once we do that, we'll manually set training to true inside our defined call method parameters, C line 344. And I'll show you where we made the changes. So we had to modify our self here. So you can see I left the normal one. I just commented out so you can see the differences. So we had the normal here was x equals batch or self dot batch norm x. So we had to modify that to add training to that. And then we had to actually define or modify our define call method here. So the original was just self x training. This time we had to have define call self x training equals true. And that's how we're going to set our uh, checkpoints up, our checkpoint callback. So, yeah, we're just getting started with the checkpoint callback. Like I said, we're just taking notes on it right now. We didn't run anything. I'll continue moving forward, and we'll probably run it overnight to show you what that looks like when we add checkpoints to our training. But, of course, I will keep you posted every step of the way as we move forward. And for now, this is the Python Poppy. You guys stay Gucci.